And so this inequality fed on itself. We start to see the ways in which there's a stagnation in technology. So there's fewer opportunities for, that economists have written about a lot in the last couple years. There's fewer opportunities for investment in new technologies. So they begin to look for other kinds of investments. Securitization makes that even easier. The lack of new jobs and new sectors makes the wages fall. The stagnant work, the stagnant job wages lead to higher borrowing demand, which leads to higher investment in consumer debt, which is a negative cycle in the economy. The virtuous cycle of inequality, where inequality is justified, is that it produces jobs for the rest of us. That 1% invests in enterprises that produce jobs, that produce wages. And the post-war, this was largely true. That 1% paid us in wages. After 1975, roughly, they just paid us in debt. They just lent, instead of paying us, they lent to us. That's how the circle was completed. And yet we all know that in the long run, that falls apart. And partially this is a policy failure. We forgot the real lessons of the New Deal. We remembered that it was good for consumers. We forgot that it was necessary also for business. And policymakers of the late 1960s, when they brought back the mortgage-backed security, confused the cause of prosperity, good jobs, with its symptom, home ownership. And for 40 years, we've been doing the same, finding new ways to funnel money into housing and credit cards and everything else, while doing very little to enable large corporations to invest in exciting, risky new enterprises, or on the other hand, to support small businesses as their own um, borrowing opportunities are crowded out. Now these instruments are not natural. These policy choices are choices. They're in fact not decided by gnomes. Gnomes do not control our economy, no matter what they tell you. Um, but gnomes and their little friends, like Leland Brensel, do create clever instruments. Clever instruments that can be used to promote growth or to choke it off. And so what changed in the 1970s was not that our American character changed. It wasn't that the hippies had their way, we all wore blue pants and became immoral. It was that our policies changed. We stopped being able to pay back what we had borrowed. And this new debt-driven economy slowed itself down. We changed the rules for the operations of capitalism. We made it easier to invest in things that did not matter than in things that did. We didn't become bad people. And what's good about this, of course, is that if the rules, the rules can be changed, whereas human nature is stubborn. And so it's not enough to just figure out what's not working about the economy. The inequality is bad, that we don't have jobs but to figure out that other side, the side we less like to talk about, the investment flows, and figure out how to bring it back, using historical examples, I think, like the DTC, to bring back change in our economy, to bring back dynamic growth and technological investment so that the economy works for us and not just for the gnomes. All right, thank you so much.